You're very welcome to Fenner Bog here at the Copper Coast Geo Park. My name is Alan Walsh and I'm going to take you on a virtual tour as part of Science Week with Association of Waterford Institute of Technology. Fenner Bog is such a special place to be. It's one of many bogs across Waterford and the only preserved bog thanks to the friends of Fenner Bog here at the Fenner community. We're going to look at some of the wildlife the formation of the bog, how it was formed and how it actually looks today. So to first to understand Fenner Bog and how it was actually formed, we need to go back to the Ice Age. Let's imagine this huge, gigantic northern ice sheet running right across Ireland. It's like massive coarse sandpaper that runs over timber, but except it's over an island. And when it travelled southwards, it gouged out a lake here at Fenner. So at 10,000 years ago, we can see that Fenner Bog, in fact, was Fenner Lake. It's funny to think about how geology could have changed in the name of this area if a lake still existed. Fenner may not even exist as a name. But once the lake was established, some pioneer species of grasses, sedges, and some trees, like this goat willow here behind me, had taken root along the lake shore and over time they grew and flourished until autumn came and the leaves fell into an anaerobic situation. This means there was no detritivores such as water shrimps or lice to digest down these valuable natural resources such as the leaves and that allowed the lake to, to build up from the bottom upward, the formation of peat and over time through prehistory, this peat grew so large that the lake became extremely shallow. And at this stage, a specialist type of moss could take hold, called stagnant moss, which I'll show you a little bit later on in the video. And this allowed the peat to build up in layers, which eventually came a raised bog over time, until humans decided to come to Ireland and discovered that peat made an excellent fuel source because of the carbon that was locked into it. And we cut down the bog here, just like many bogs right across Ireland, and Fenner was no different. And today we have a present day bog, full of diversity. Over 200 different species of plants and animals can be found in Fenner Bog. And thanks to the great community here, we have this lovely boardwalk that we can actually go out across the bog that covers some 32 acres of land. Pond here at the southern end of Fenner Bog is home to a variety of pond life, such as invertebrates like the pond skater, which is a type of bug that waits on the water film until another insect falls on it and using its mouth part it attacks its prey and ingests it. You have the raft spider which can, in fact can actually spread out its own body weight on the water film and skate across the top of the water. Underneath the water surface you'll find pond snails that are herbivores that feed on the decaying plant matter and also the live algae that grows within the pond itself. Two, you find the tiger of the underwater world. This in fact is a dragonfly nymph. It's an ambush predator that waits for its prey to come along. As soon as prey crosses in front of its eyes, it releases its lower jaws in a matter of seconds to capture prey such as tadpoles and even fish and other insect life. Feeding on the insects, there's also amphibians. The native, well, not the native truly, but it is native now to Ireland, but introduced was the frog, which Waterford was the first location of the introduction of frogs to Ireland. They're found readily here at Fenner Bog, but keep a sharp eye out, because they may be just hiding underneath your feet in the leaf matter. And then, of course, there is the bird life. Bird life such as the grey hern that waits patiently at the pond's edge waiting for a small fish, eel or frog or even rodent 
to cross its path that it can feed on. So here at Fenner Bog, it has many different species of plants and animals that associate themselves to the diverse biodiversity that we have here. One of such plants that I have in my hand predates the actual dinosaurs. It is one of the most earliest forms of plants that you will find across the Fenner Bog landscape. It's known as the horsetail. The horsetail is reliant on water for reproduction. It drops its pollen within the water and both the seed combine to grow a new one. But most plants, well actually all plants, need air to get to their roots. And the horse hair, horse tail, has specifically designed itself in a way or evolved to do such a thing. It's like a hollow straw. And it's a bit like if you went snorkeling, now you have a snorkel in your mouth to breed. Well the plant has done just the same thing. A very fascinating plant and we are in autumn, late autumn, early winter here at Fenerbog. So there's not much left of a lot of these plants but I would always say go visit it in the spring and the summer and you'll see them in full bloom just like a horsetail. Another fascinating plant that's just right next to me here is a tussock sedge. A tussock sedge is so important for the development of any bog to preserve water. They love to retain water at their root system. The leaves, which are spiky to the touch, are very similar to the spikes on a cactus. When it rains, the leaves in fact channel water down into the centre of the sedge, where it holds onto that water. And when it's warm, the leaves actually close over to shorten their surface area to keep the water around itself. And this is such a valuable plant here at Fannerbog and you will see huge amounts of them. They look like people with shaggy haircuts sticking up out of the bog. We've made our way from the southern end of Fennerbog towards the northern end. And this is where the bog completely opens up. This area here is a very special area for different species of plants. Such plants as the bog cotton can be seen here growing in the late summer and looks like little whisks of smoke on top of small sticks. Well worth looking at. And also you have plants such as the marsh orchid as well that grows here. These type of plants are very specially and uniquely adapted for living in this type of habitat. We have bog bean as well, which is, has a large tubular root system that allows it to float like a raft on top. It has leaves of three, so very easy to identify, with a diamond shaped leaf, flower structure. Each little flower looks like a small little constellation of stars when you look at it very closely. And this plant reaches its roots down into the bog system looking for nutrients. Because what's very fascinating about bogs is that they are not nutrient rich. Like the farmland that we see around us or the fields or woodland. The, all these plants have to fight for nutrients. And one such plant has especially adapted itself for this environment. This plant is a carnivorous plant meaning it actually eats other insects. It's called the sundew. The sundew has sticky leaves that it traps small insects on and folds over and it gets its nutrients from those dead insects. When visiting Fenner Bog, we have this lovely trackway that we can walk across. I would never recommend getting down into the bog. Bogs can sink you very slowly and it's best safe to stay on the walkway. But for demonstration purposes, let's take a look at this track here. Let's see what made that track, or let's have a think about it. Like many mammals live here at Fenerbog, and two of the largest mammals that you'll find in here are Sika deer and otters. Otters can travel from Carrickavantry, Valley Scanlon, down to Kilfarisi, and also come here to Fenerbog. The main food source for an otter here would be the frog population. But this type of track indicates a large mammal has been going across the bog. Whether 
it's an otter or a deer, you need to get up very early in the morning to get that opportunity. So why not come down to Fenerbog and set yourself up and see you might even find one of those mammals that made this track. In my right hand I have Future Bog. The plants have been working very hard all summer long, using sunlight to create energy and food for itself, but also collecting carbon from the air. This carbon falls into the bog and it's then preserved within the peat. Bogs themselves and bogs like Fenner Bog can help with the fight against climate change. By preserving bogs, we can hold on to our own carbon and for future generations have fabulous biodiversity in place. And in my left hand, I have some of the moss and it just shows exactly how good this actually is at holding water. I'm just gonna demonstrate. It's like a sponge, how it retains water and allows bogs to actually grow and develop. Today, Fenner Bog is home to a variety of different species of plants. We looked at some of the plants out on Fenner Bog, but this gives you a better idea of where you can actually find some of those species. When you're at Fenner Bog, look at this map and it will show you the variety from the acidic bog here at the south all the way up to the northern end of the bog. Too, you can see the bog cotton as well and the flowers that are with the bog bean. But right over my head, is one of the pioneer species that I mentioned at the start, which is the goat willow. This particular plant lives with a symbiotic relationship with a bacteria in its roots to fix nitrogen. We spoke about the bog being very little in nitrogen, or many other minerals in fact. So specialized plants such as the willow, the gorse, the birch and the alder have all adapted themselves to survive and thrive within a bog species, in the bog environment. The willow sucks up water from the bog also through a process of osmosis. When it's warm out, the leaves evaporate water out and draw water up from the bog. So you might actually see different types of varieties of plants around the roots of the willow compared to the fenland. Well worth looking out for. The vegetation at Fenner Bog provides a wide range of cover for many bird species that can be found here. Many of those species can be very similar to the birds that you would find in your garden, but also too you'll find specialist birds that live here, such as the reed warbler and the willow warbler. These warblers are very important species of bird within bog situations, especially for one bird that migrates from North Africa here every spring to find a nest site, not of its own though. It seeks out the warbler's nests to lay its own egg. Of course, this bird is the cuckoo. And if you're here during the spring, you might just hear one or early summer. But other species that we do have here are such as the gray tit and the blue tit. We have rooks towards the church, the rookery over there. And too, you'll see reed specialist birds too. Now on this sign, you might also notice a mammal. And yes, we do have winged mammals across the bog and it's a long-eared bat. You also may come across pipistralis bats, which are flying quite low, just above head height as you're walking in the evening time. And lizer bats, which is Ireland's largest bat that can be found grow, flying above the tree canopy around the bog. Two other migrant birds that we find here are of course the swallows. Now Fenner Bog, if you've ever experienced it during the summer months, especially in the evening time, you might end up scratching your head quite a lot. And this is because of the biting midgets that come off the bog in the evening time. But thankfully birds like swallows, they feed on these insects and help us out along the way. With a wide variety of mammals found at Fenner Bog, down to the smallest, such as the shrew, which are vicious little predators of the undergrowth that have to eat many times their own body weight in food daily, right up to the larger mammals, such as the fox and the badger, as well as the imported seeker deer, 
and American mink. But thankfully we still have many native species such as the river otter or the otter that can be found around the bog. You may be lucky to see one if you're up early in the morning but keep an eye out for the tracks or even a scat from the otter itself which is a small poo that has little bits of fish bones in there and smells funnily enough of jasmine. And then of course you have the comeback of the red squirrel that is making a comeback nationwide and also here at Fenner Bog. Thank you, thanks to the predatory pine martin which is now dining on the grey squirrel. Thank you for joining us on this Copper Coast Geopark tour of Fenner Bog, part of Science Week, association with Waterford Institute of Technology. I've been Alan Walsh and please take the time in the future to visit Fenerbahn. Even if you can only visit it once a month, that's 12 times a year, to see the diverse changes right over the course of the seasons. Thank you.